So here's the classic NES console, um, it's called a toaster. If you turn it around you can see this one was made in 1985 and it comes with the facility built in of composite and also single mono audio sound. Also on the side here is the output for RF which of course we don't need anymore and um, same as the SNES they used AC instead of DC so this took a 9 volt um, input on the AC side which incidentally converted internally into DC power which we'll cover in just a sec when you take out the screws from the back of the system and lift the casing off you get presented with this this of course is the shielding primarily for the RF which as I said we don't actually need and over here is the daughter board which contains for the video, audio etc. I'm just going to take out the various screws in their position and take this part off and then talk through the next stage. With these various screws off this piece now detaches and they get presented with a mechanism. This of course is designed to pop the cartridge inside and out but because of that the system would often bend the pins and uh, cause one or two problems. So what we're going to do now is to take this unit apart and then I can uh, show you what the board looks like. And incidentally because we're going to use DC power the reset and power buttons down here will not work. Um, <coughs> but it does mean also we don't need that part of the board. So we have easy access to removing this part, just lift up the corner of the board here and then just slide it out from the cartridge. And that now gives us access and ability to lift this out. The back shielding is supported by these two plugs in place, so just gently ease the two out. And then that will allow you, just remember which one goes to which, this one goes to that one. Okay, so this will now lift off and reveal the main parts of the board. So, turn it around to the proper way. There's a few things to show here. This is the section we were talking about with the, uh, the video and everything else. And that's the 7805. That converts the voltage down to 5 volts. So we can eliminate a fair bit of the circuitry inside of here just by not using the AC. The part of the board around here is in quite solid. These um, sections are quite hard to desolder. Um, but you can, if you use a drill bit, literally just cut down and cut these parts out. All this section here, apart from these five pins and their connections, are all groundings anyway. So you could quite happily cut along here and then cut these particular parts out in order to release this board. The cartridge port itself just pops out with a little bit of HEVO because it's in fairly solidly. And then what we're going to do here is to use a pin or a needle and just tease up the edges on the port. That's the part that goes into the board of course. This is the part that's designed to take the cartridge in and then the cartridge maneuvers itself down. So if you put your pin inside the contacts you can just very gently just lift them up one by one and that will ensure that the cartridge makes good contact with the pins. So we're going to do that. There's also the easy method of making this region free so that it can work on NTS um, C games as well. This capacitor needs to be bent back to have access to these pins. This is a chip that's the 319. You can desolder the part if you want to or otherwise what you can do is to use a screwdriver, pop it underneath that pin and then just very gently twist it to break that pin connection. Not the most elegant way. However, as you see, the pin is now free. Make sure it's not touching anything else. And that is all that's needed to 
to make the system region free and play the American titles too. So, walking around the system a little bit more. This was an expansion port which was designed for additional stuff for the NES but it was never released so that can be removed. If you pry off the metal shielding um, you'll find then with a little bit of leverage that this port comes off. It just helps to get the board smaller. The capacitors of course can be relocated and the surface grounding can be removed and also this part of the connection as well if you're making the system into a portable. If as per this particular one we're not going to do that. We've already done the mod for making it region free uh, and we've also explored how to make the cartridge more reliable. Uh, this unit is just going to get um, put back together again. But for the portable this section will be removed. Inside of it is one transistor and one resistor and that's all that's needed for composite output. The audio is perfectly fine off uh, pin number two. Number one is provided for the video which needs that amplification. And the two at the end here aren't actually used because that's to do with the reset buttons. But as we said, these aren't used anyway in the system. So it does make life a lot easier. What I've done actually is to use two consoles. Um, this is the one that I used for the previous video. Um, the one of course I've made smaller for my portable project. It's already reduced. This is just to show the region free working. That's with a PAL game. And then if we turn it off, pop it out. This um, pop out section is fairly reliable but it does sometimes need a few presses to work. This is an NTSC game. One of my favourites actually for the NES system. Turn it on and there we have it. It just demonstrates that the uh, NTSC games work with the system. To summarise the board reduction, I've taken off the player one uh, connectors over here, the capacitors, put the small board over here, connect it into the controller, um, which is all being made to be about the same level as the level of the chips to keep things nice and flat. The capacitors have been flattened. This is what's left of that daughter board. Uh, all I needed was the uh, transistor and the resistor for the composite video. The groundings have all been removed, the cartridge port section has also been uh, reduced in size. Player 2 didn't need it, could have done the same as I did with this. And the blue connector that was originally on the system for the reset and the on-off um, has also been removed. In fact the whole piece of that board has been cut away. The 7025 is just down here because it's going to be part of the integrated system and the system is just running off a standard 7.5 volt DC power feeding into the 7805. The port itself, the game port, has been relocated. This is actually a hacked um, cartridge port from the rather large one that was originally in place. And uh, for this video I'm going to show Yoshi Cookie. It never looks quite so good when you um, connect to a television uh, on the camera, but it does appear quite uh, quite well on the screen. So if I plug in the power, this is just 7.5 volt DC power, and as you see, it appears absolutely fine. The audio is pretty good as well. Of course, it's only a mono, because uh, that's all the system could actually produce 